record. Okay, so uh, multimeters and other circuit testing devices. Um, safety 1051. All right, multimeters and other circuit testing devices. What do we have on this uh, on this uh, first opening screen right away here? Uh, over here, oh, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in. These are a couple of simple multimeters. Uh, one is the, the digital multimeter. And uh, as you can tell uh, later, uh, after that, you will be able to tell that this is something that's called an auto range, automatic range. Multimeter, uh, digital multimeter that tests for different quantities such as voltage, current, or um, resistance. And there are some other, uh, I think pretty much that's it with this one. And the other one here is a clampon uh, meter. Also, it's a multimeter. Uh, and uh, this, this little clamp here is being used for measuring current without, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, without having to interrupt the circuit. And I will show you. We will show you that. So uh, I have uh, this two present these two presentations here for you. Plus, there's another treat that you're going to get uh, because uh, last year when I was trying to do the uh, class, um, I had an internet outage uh, and uh, the internet was going up and down. Uh, so I had to interrupt the class and I just said email to everybody. Look, I'm just going to do a video. Uh, and I'm going to release that on YouTube. So you can watch that as well. Uh, that's a pretty detailed uh, multimeters uh, presentation. And uh, that one is actually because I was able to do this thing on a local computer instead of shooting and recording through Zoom, uh, then that one is in HD. So uh, you're going to see nice and clear picture on, on that, all right? Okay, so this is these are the couple of meters. And of course, these are the leads. Um, now, what else do we have here? Um, here we have another uh, clamp-on multimeter uh, that uh, tests for various uh, things. Uh, it's just uh, you know just to show you that they come in different shape, different shapes and forms. Uh, this clamp is right here. Uh, so, um, um, well, obviously it's uh, it's a different type of clamp-on multimeter, but nevertheless, it's a clamp-on. Um, this one here, that is a meter that doesn't test for the voltage or current. However, it tests uh, with this one here, you can use um, this one, this meter you can use to test uh, data lines or communications lines. So you can test the CAT 5E, CAT, I'm not sure if CAT 6 goes into this meter here. Uh, and uh, also you can test the coaxial cables. And this is something that's called a qualifier, not, a, um, yeah, it's a qualifier, uh, not a certifier. Uh, this one here, if you wanna buy from Fluke, uh, it runs about $1,000. Uh, or the last time I checked the price, a couple of years ago. Uh, so it only is going to qualify the line as um, um, CAT5E or CAT6 or coaxial cable of certain genere. Um, it's not going to certify it as such. So difference between qualifying and certifying. Qualifying says, yeah, uh, it's going to test the wire mapping if the wires are correct. Uh, and it's going to perform simple frequency response tests and it's going to test for the length and it's going to say, yeah, it qualifies as the um, as CAT5E, for example, up to specifications, uh, CAT5E. And that, uh, what, what is CAT5E, CAT6 and optical fiber and all that communication things, you're going to have it with me the next term when we do the, um, uh, it's the ELEC 1013, I think that's the class, right? Now, so that's a pretty, uh, a pretty fun class as well. But this is nevertheless a, a testing device. Uh, this one here um, is uh, another data meter that is, uh, whoa, where are we here? That is going, it's a, basically it's a, it's a scope, so oscilloscope, right? Or spect, uh, scope meter, right? So it looks, it, it is going to analyze things just like an oscilloscope. Um, right, so it's a portable thing. All right, so uh, meters comes come with uh, different shapes and forms. So let's keep going and uh, analyze some of the basics of that. Some of the definitions here: a multimeter. Multimeter is a device. Um, 
Wow, here's a statement. Multimeter is a device. Wow. Uh, device used to measure voltage, resistance, and current in electronics and electrical equipment. Voltage, resistance, and current, and other things. Like some of the meters are going to uh, measure the specifications of, uh, of a transistor, the HFE, or the amplification coefficient. Um, or uh, or uh, some of them might as well uh, measure the capacitance of a capacitor and the inductance of uh, inductor. Right? Um, so different, me different meters measure different quantities. That's why it's called multimeter. And the difference between this and a hammer is that hammer is used for only for one thing. Right? Just uh, That's not going to be on a test. What's the difference between this and hammer? All right. Uh, okay. Using uh, certain multimeters, multimeter models, you can test to be sure that the components, such as diodes, capacitors, and transistors, function properly. You can also troubleshoot circuits, uh, circuit to see where the current is failing and pinpoint the problem spots. It also it is also used to test continuity between two points to verify if there are any breaks in the circuit or a line or a wire. Okay, so that's the definition. Oh, there's more. Um, <clears throat> advanced models are capable of graphing and printing waveforms. Like, for example, that data tester that I showed you, uh, the qualifier one, uh, you can, um, I can, well, after you press the test button, it's going to perform uh, different tests on the line, like frequency response, length, and uh, wire mapping, and certain things. Uh, and uh, that test can be actually saved, named on the in the memory of that meter, and then you can connect it to your computer at home, and you can print those in PDF form, and you can send it to a client uh, just, to, uh, just to show that the work that you have done is correct. Some clients request that. Some clients request certification of the lines. So uh, the certifi certifiers, uh, they test uh, more rigorously for frequency response and the crosstalk and all kinds of other things. Uh, more rigorously, and then it's going to certify uh, by a certain meter, and the serial number of that meter is going to be mentioned in the um, in the test, and so on. And uh, some clients uh, request uh, the lines that you install to be certified as well. All right. So, well, okay. Now, two basic uh, types of multimeters. Right? Two basic types we have here. Uh, right, so first one is analog and digital. All right, so let's take a look at the analog. The analog, you can see, I wonder if you can see it here. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. It has a dial, all right, and it has a needle. And of course, it has the ranges you can select to different quantities you can measure. And how you do the reading is you just basically see how far the needle swings out from the resting spot. And then, based on the scale, according to whatever you're measuring, uh, you can uh, you can see what the quantity is. That was the sort of like a galvanometer based um, uh, meter, and those were the meters that came out first on the market. Later on, as the technology has advanced, uh, came out with the digital multimeters. All right, now just because the digital multimeters can display a specific number doesn't mean that the number is a be all and end all number. Um, <clears throat> one of the, when I was in college, uh, we had to do a, a, a little bit of a project of uh, getting some electronic parts and building on the printed circuit board. Uh, we used to build the digital multimeter, which was it was a simple one. It would not display the numbers, but it uh, we would be able to do, use the uh, uh, LED um, LED chip with uh, with ten LEDs and uh, um, dual inline package, uh, and those LEDs would light up from one to ten to show you. Okay, we can measure the one to ten uh, volts uh, on that one. And uh, what we have learned from that is that that thing has to be still calibrated to its sensitivity and how exactly it reacts to the quantity that is measuring. So it's the same thing. There are meters you can buy for $40 and you can meters that you can buy for $5,000. Um, uh, and uh, you know, there's gotta be some reason for, uh, for that, right? I bet that uh, you, can, you can check that with the multimeters that you have. 
you can just set up the power supply in one of your classrooms um, and uh, to say 10 volts and see uh, if you measure it with one multimeter, what, what is the exact volt that you're going to get with the decimal points. And uh, if you get five different multimeters, some of the values are going to be slightly different. All right. So uh, uh, that's one thing that's uh, I'm saying, just because it's a digital meter and it's showing you the number, doesn't mean that this is the complete and exact thing. Those still have to be calibrated, tested and verified because they can show you the wrong value. But for the most part, uh, if they work, uh, they serve our purpose for whatever we use it. Now, um, also, what I'm going to say to you that would you, is there any situation that you would prefer um, to use the analog meter with the needle that swings out over the digital meter? Because, you know, this, can, this thing came out on the market later as the technology has advanced. So we should just get one of those and we are good for all situations that we could imagine. That's not true. Is there a situation that you would want to use the analog meter over the digital meter? Um, and I'm just going to stop here. Is, uh, I'm just going to go to the chat a little bit. Uh, is there an area we can change into the safety boots? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, hallway. <laughs> Basically, that's the, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, then, uh, all right, uh, let's just see. There's another one here from Brody. Where do you need, where do you need to be more precise? Okay, so that's an answer here. Oh, wait a second, toolkit. All right, do we need to bring our toolkit to this week's lab? What do we have? It's a, a NMD 90. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip a cable. So we need a cable wire stripper. We need a, a basic screwdriver set. So the ones that I showed you in the last lecture. So yeah, you know what? You might as well bring the whole toolkit um, uh, for that. The toolkit is not that excruciatingly big. Um, so uh, you might as well uh, get used to carrying your tools uh, with you and, uh, and get used to the idea of that, all right? Um, so and we need this, okay, but the basic ones, we need the side cutters or the wire cutters, we need the stripper. We need the basic screwdrivers, uh, Red Robertson, Green Robertson, Phillips number one, Phillips number two, and uh, at least quarter inch slotted screwdriver, uh, if you, uh, you know, so, and that should be fine. Uh, Sharpie, magic marker or permanent marker, always good idea, right? So, all right, so uh, there's a question here. Uh, I, I said, would you ever prefer, uh, using um, multi, uh, analog multimeter or analog meter over the digital meter. And uh, so it could be more precise. Who said that? Uh, yeah, so bring the lab kit, lab kit and tools. Yeah, so um, what did I say here? All right, those. All right, so I said, would you like to use uh, analog over the digital? So uh, who is it? Israel says, no, no, Jonathan says, uh, to get more precise reading. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, well, yeah, it's a loaded answer. And I'm going to expand on that, all right? Israel says, would it allow you to compare what one measurement is compared to another? Yes, that's also correct. Uh, but I'm going to give you some pretty interesting example here. So bring the lab toolkits. Yes, please bring the lab toolkit. All right. Uh, what if we don't have a kit yet? Uh, back order. So uh, basically, what I said, uh, I listed those tools. Uh, wire stripper. You need. You need uh, wire cutters. You need screwdrivers. Phillips one and Phillips two. You need Robertson red, Robertson green, and uh, Sharpie. Oh, slotted screwdriver, quarter inch one, that should be fine. Uh, you can get those quite cheaply or pretty much uh, you would have those except for the wire stripper. Uh, you, you, you might have to go and get one or borrow one from your friend from another class uh, until you get that kit. But if you don't have those tools, you just won't be able to fully participate in that lab, right? All right. Um, 
What if I don't have a, okay, uh, so section four doesn't have a lab tomorrow. No, no labs this week yet. Uh, all the labs start, uh, all the labs start next week, right? Just look at the schedule that I have posted. Uh, the other one that you have on your application, venture college application, it's a generic one, all right? So uh, yes, that's correct, but it's a generic one. The detailed one, uh, but on bi-weekly basis, uh, go by the one that I posted. Uh, all right, so now, why would you want to use analog instead of um, um, digital? Well, digital, or so analog, would have, uh, okay, so yeah, I don't want, I'm going to lower the light a little bit so you can see the writing better. The writing on the wall, writing on the glass. All right, so the digital analog meter would have a scale. And it has multiple scales, but let's just take one. And here is a needle that is going to swing. Now, let's say uh, you have a voltage, but it's not just a DC voltage. Right? Let's say the voltage is supposed to be sitting at, let's say, 50 volts here. All right. And it is going to fluctuate between uh, 55 <laughs> and between 55 and 45, 55 and 40. So it's going to go like this. The needle is going to go like this. All right. You wouldn't be able, who's making the noises? Uh, you would not be able to uh, to uh, measure that with the digital multimeter because the digital multimeter has a bunch of digits, two, four, or five, whatever, and then it's going to start counting up and counting down, counting up and counting down. Okay, if you don't stop, I'm going to mute the heck out of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, uh, then when, uh, when you apply the digital multimeter, you won't be able to measure it that kind of stuff, all right? <laughs> you want to stop? Or do you want me to find out who you are? I'm Bill. Hey, you done? Thanks, man. Okay, uh, so um, so that okay. Let's go back to this uh, presentation here. All right, so analog. The value is measured. The value is measured. Analog, the value of the measured quantity is displayed by the deflecting of mechanical pointer against the analog scale, right? So it's a definition of that. For digital, the value of the measured quantity, such as voltage or current, is displayed on a digital readout, right? Mostly LCD, but it's a scenic slide for the display of extra other uh, samples. Uh, so these are the displays other than LCD. Uh, we will have LCD, liquid crystal display, or uh, LED, light emitting diodes, OLED. Um, there are some cool TVs coming out with the OLED, organic light emitting diodes. Uh, just a little good word of advice. If you ever get one of those TVs, keep it away from moisture. This, the, the OLED displays, they are very allergic to any kind of moisture. Uh, you can uh, really mess up an expensive TV with that. Uh, and then there's some others, and I included some links. Uh, just This is just for the FYI, for information uh, as far as the LCD and other types of displays. You might as well get that information, so why not? Right? All right, two basic styles of digital multimeters. Right? And this is going to be on the test. So here, uh, switched and auto range. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the, um, on the switched. Yeah, here's the selection dial of the switched multimeter. What you can see here, you have the 
amps or the current, DC current, see there's the dotted line and the straight line, suggests that it's a DC. Do we have an AC current here? Uh, look at that, this one doesn't have AC current. I don't see it, yeah. All right, but it has AC voltage. Now, let's take a look at the DC voltage. So the DC voltage is here, and it extends from this point to this point right here. So not only you select the voltage on that, you also select the range that you want to measure. So like, for example, this 200 millivolts, with this range, you're going to be able to measure anything that is no more than 200 millivolts. That's a very small voltage. The next one here says two, all right? So with this range, if you select the dial to this range, you will be able to measure voltage no more than two volts. So if it's 1.5 volts, I would suggest if you're measuring 1.5 volts or 1.8 volts, I would suggest that you switch to this range here, yeah, select that range. If you're measuring 15 volts, of course, this will just show you that you're over limit. Uh, and then you're going to flip onto the next one to see if you get any display. So if it's 18 volts, I would suggest to switch to this uh, 20 volts. Now, if you have the, uh, if you have the uh, 20 volts range selected, is it going to, is the meter going to be able to measure 1.5 volts? Yes, it will be able to, but you won't get the most precise reading, the most exact reading, all right? Because if you notice, uh, you're going to get more decimal points uh, when you select the smaller range. So you'll be able to tell whether it's like 1.56 volts or 1.58 volts or something like that uh, when you select the two volts range. But if you select the 20 or the higher 200 volts range, you're still going to see maybe you know, 1.5 volts, but that's it. You won't be able to tell whether it's 1.56, 1.57, 1.58 or whatnot, okay? So uh, the general rule is that if you want to uh, measure, the, you're gonna get the most precise reading, you want to select the range that is slightly bigger than the voltage that you're measuring. And then you will be able to get the most precise reading. That goes to as far as analog and, and um, uh, digital multimeters. So if you select, because the analog multimeters also have ranges that you select. So uh, when it comes to uh, uh, measuring, uh, let's say this was a hundred volt, uh, just you know, 100 volts range that we select to the scale. And if we're measuring uh, something like 80 volts, so the needle is going to go something to here, all right? So that's probably going to get the most accurate reading when it comes to that. But if you have that range selected, and if you're going to read maybe three volts, that thing is going to barely swing out and it's going to see something that sometimes you won't be able to read. So you're going to be like, ah, oh, you get some voltage. So you're going to switch down the ranges to maybe five volt range, and then you'll be able to swing out the needle as far as you can without going over. You know? So swing the needle out as far as you can without going over. And that's how you get the, uh, the most accurate reading. That goes same with the um, digital uh, multimeters as well. Right. Okay, so, um, now, this is a switched range because you select, you, um, you use the dial to select the quantity that you're measuring. You're, uh, so let's say you're measuring voltage, but then you get manually, you get to select the range manually. So you have the control over this thing manually, just like driving a standard car. Right. Now, when it comes to auto range, there's a different type of dial, you see? you have a different dial that you can just select AC voltage, that's it. Or DC voltage, that's all you select, you are selecting. And the meter is going to show you the quantity displayed. 
or the amount, and the quantity as say is going to show, okay, you're measuring voltage AC, volts. Now, it is going to automatically select if you're measuring something like, um, um, well, if you have 50 millivolts, which is 50 one thousandths of a volt, 50 millivolts, it is going to show you 50, but this little icon is going to change to millivolts. So when you have the auto range, you just select what you're measuring, voltage, current, resistance, or whatnot, and you have to read the unit. Yeah. In this one, which is this um, um, switched range, you know that this is this one here is up to 600 volts AC, and it's showing just two volts, which is kind of a wrong thing to select. If you want to measure two volts, I would just uh, go either two if it's less than two volts, or the next one will be 20, right? And it's also showing you volts. Some of that is going, some of the meters were going to show you the units and some of them will not because you already have selected the range here. So uh, quite often you're gonna have to read the manual when it comes to that. The reason why I'm doing this multimeters here because um, every year we get the student feedback. Um, so you get to write about all your professors. Uh, if somebody made you mad, you can just go to town and, uh, and, and, and write it uh, in the student feedback. Or if uh, somebody made you happy, you can you are more than welcome to write that. And in one of those feedbacks in previous years, I had a suggestion that uh, because the meters were done in one of the last classes, and there was a suggestion we should have that multimeters first because that will also help us with other subjects. So I go, you know what, it's a cool idea. So why not? I do listen to suggestions. All right. uh, so, uh, okay, so there's a different switched range or the auto range. So let's just read what I wrote here. Uh, manual switching between, okay, it would switch. We are dealing with manual switching between functions and ranges to get the most accurate reading. And remember, we get the most accurate reading by selecting the closest value, closest upper value of the, um, of the voltage, for example, or current, <coughs> and a little bit over. We wanna swing the needle as far as we can, then we get the most accurate meeting, uh, reading. And if, if it comes to the digital, you just imagine that you're swinging the needle, all right? All right, so other range, manual function selection. The meter senses the magnitude of the measured entity and automatically adjusts the range for the most accurate reading. Uh, you know, potatoes, potatoes. Uh, some people prefer to, you, to have the switched range meters some people prefer to have the outer range depending on the situation depending on the application generally if i had to get one my personal opinion you don't have to take it but uh, you can make up your own mind about things i prefer the switched range because i get more control over what i'm measuring and how okay. and i wrote the thing here elaborate on most accurate reading so i just elaborated on that Okay, so um, obviously that is going to be on the test, on the evaluation. Uh, how do we get the most accurate reading? All right, now measurement categories for meters. All right, now we do have, we do distinguish sources, measurement category or source or sources. Cat four, cat three, cat two, and in most of the sources you or the um, yeah the, the information sources, while well, I'm talking about power sources, most of the sources are not going to even list category one. And I'll, we'll just stop quickly and we'll talk about that. All right. So let's say category two meter, all right. single phase receptacles. In brief, all right. That's for imagining single phase receptacles. It will be the receptacles that are in your kitchen or in your wall that you plug in your vacuum cleaner or coffee maker, right? Uh, and what's this uh, thing here? Examples, all right. Um, so 
you can measure the voltage that is supplied to appliances, portable tools, and other household and similar loads. Outlet on long branch circuits, outlets uh, at more than 10 meters, 30 feet. So uh, here, so uh, long branch circuits, they are considered to be at about more than 10 feet, 10 meters or 10 feet from the cat three source or outlets that are more than 20 meters or 60 feet from the CAT4 sources. I will talk about what the sources categories are and we're going to recap a little bit for better retention, right? Now, there is category three meter, three phase distribution, including single phase commercial lighting. Where do we use that meter on? Equipment in fixed installations such as switch gear or uh, polyphaser motors, these are the brands, uh, motor, electric motors, uh, bus and feeder in industrial plants. Um, so there will be the industrial kind of applications. Distribution panel devices, lighting systems in larger buildings, appliance outlets, which uh, sh with short connections to the service entrance. So appliance outlets, like for example, there would be a, an outlet that is right beside the um, electrical panel. Sometimes they're being installed there, all right? <coughs> right? Excuse me. Now, category four, in brief, the sources, three phase at utility connection, any outdoor conductors. This would be on the other side of your house, on the other side of the wall, outside electricity meters, primary over current protection equipment, outside service entrance, service drop from pole to building. Uh, how many times do you have to measure that? Uh, when is the last time you measured the electricity coming into your house? But then again, uh, you might work uh, uh, later on, depending on where you find your job. Uh, runs between meters and panel, uh, overhead line to detached buildings, underground line to well pumps. All right, we have, I'm just gonna monitor the chat line a little bit here. Uh, what's the difference between the two voltages? Okay, so that will be AC and DC. We're going to talk about that. Uh, yeah, AC and DC. Uh, yes, uh, the one with the curve is AC and the flat one is DC. Okay, the V. Okay, so uh, there's some discussion going on. Good. All right, do we have access to this chart? Yes, it is posted in the posted. It's already active. You can download it right now. Uh, you can view it and download it right now uh, in the lecture notes uh, under the student items. Okay. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit and analyze some things. Sources, categories, types of sources, all right. So, oh wow, this is really blurry on my screen as well, all right? So I wonder if how, is, how you can see that. Anyways, I'm going to explain what you see. So here's a transformer that comes from the street, that's on the pole, and it is outside. So if you want to measure the voltage there, you're going to have to get a tall ladder. Now, please don't do that unless you're a city worker or something and uh, you have to have some procedures. But this would be cat, category four source. Then there's a service entrance meter that is on the outside of the wall. It's also a category four power source. Okay. Now, on the other side of the wall, we have the distribution panel, the electrical panel. That's already cut three because it's on this side of the wall. That's inside. Outside, there's no cut three. And this is not cut three, cut four as far as data cabling. This is a category four power source. Right? It has nothing to do with the data cabling. Uh, all right, so category three would be the electrical panel. Right? Now, distribution, uh, there's an outlet, the, this, the, the, uh, the power outlet that you can plug in your vacuum cleaner to, that's already category two, All right? So this is as far as the residential thing, right? Now, again, industrial here, area here. All right, 
anything that's outside you can see or underground that's not in the building it's considered to be category four and inside distribution panel cut three the transformer that transforms the electricity to desired form and shape it's cut three category three and then the single phase duplex receptacle normal duplex receptacle that's considered as category two so these are the category categories of the sources and accordingly they are matched with the type of a multimeter or meter that you can apply to right so what is the uh, most capable or the toughest one of course that would be category four and the least tough one would be the category two what happens if you use the not so tough meter on the tough source well what can happen you can get something that's called an arc flash which we'll talk about in further lectures when well, arc flash is an undesired shortage of a circuit or short circuit which basically creates a large release of an energy and that thing that meter that thing uh, that meter can actually blow up in your hands if it's not designed to uh, handle so much power and when it blows up in your hands write it down it's not good all right got it uh, so <clears throat> so that's how uh, you know that's how we classify those the meters here okay. I took a picture of your, uh, I think you still have that, it's a couple of years ago. I took a picture of the meter that you have in your kits. So here, let's just take a look at the front of that. We can tell right away that this is a digital multimeter because it has an LCD display. And you have the quantities such as resistance. Uh, you can actually measure capacitance with that. You can measure capacitors. And you have current. Here's the DC current. Here's the AC current. You can measure AC voltage. You can measure DC voltage. And you have the, op the option of selecting which range you want to select with the dial. So this is a switched range multimeter as opposed to automatic. And personally, this is my preference. You have more control over what you're doing and what you're seeing on this thing. Right? We're going to analyze those ports later. Now, uh, on the back side, you have something like this here. And I magnified that a little bit. So, can we see that? That's the magnification of the picture of the back. All right. So, you can measure with this one up to 600 volts of the CAT3 source. So, up to 600 volts. Uh, cut three category three source. Uh, can you measure the voltage uh, on the um, electrical panel? Yes, all right, because that's considered category three source up to 600 volts. And you can measure up to 1000 volts of the category two source. The category two is less tough, that means it lets you measure more volts in a category two. And it lets you measure less volts in a category three, which is a tougher one. All right. Pollution degree number two. Let's stop here a little bit. I have the picture of the pollution degrees. Pollution degree number two. Zoom in a little bit. All right. Pollution degrees according to the UL standards. Pollution number two, equipment being evaluated to the standard 60950. It's a number of the, it's a standard number of the UL set uh, rules. And that uh, example of that kind of environment, it would be laboratory, laboratories, uh, test stations, or 
basically an office environment. So when you are sitting in your house right now in your room, you are probably sitting in the pollution degree number two. Okay. Uh, now, pollution degree number one would be a clean room environment inside of sealed components. All right, so that's uh, that's when you have to wear a lab coat and uh, all kinds of things uh, to uh, not introduce any dust specks on the uh, in the environment. Um, some of the production halls are sensitive to that, especially when you produce some sensitive parts like integrated circuits and whatnot. Pollution degree number three, electrical environment, industrial and framing areas. So that will be on the construction site, unheated rooms, boiler rooms, that's the pollution degree number three. Pollution degree number four, electrical equipment uh, for outdoor use. So basically that's what it means here. You can go back to this chart. I don't have that thing posted, but uh, perhaps I will. All right. Okay, let's go back to our thing. So now you can see if you read that, you know what that means. You can measure up to 600 volts category three and you can measure up to 1000 volts category two. Category two is less tough. Category three is more tough. Category three can do more damage than category two. However, uh, do not experiment with that. Kids, don't, don't do it at home. All right. Stay at school and don't do drugs. All right, next uh, slide here. So the next slide here. Meters can be very simple, such as the ones that we have here. Or the meters can be complicated. <laughs> you feel like you know more now? All right. Uh, so uh, to the point that the, uh, you know, some, okay, so now you're going to know more. These are very simple meters. You can just get the manual or you can just grab one and figure it out after a while and, uh, and, and you're good. Okay. Some of the meters are more complicated. Well, they cost more money. Uh, like for example, this far one right here, that thing can cost about ten to $15,000. And uh, so what did I say here? The meters can be complex to the point that training could be required on how to use it. And some meters come with live tech support. So you get the meter and you get the telephone number to call uh, 24 hours live tech support if uh, you're stuck on some functions and features of that meter. Right? Um, all right. So uh, now, uh, why do the, it's probably not a typo. Why do our lab schedule says five, oh, 5 a.m. to seven, yeah, it is a typo. <laughs> That's a long lab, all right? So uh, yeah, good, good thinking. <laughs> so it's 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, uh, and, and depending on when you, where you're going to find the jobs, uh, if you're in business on your own, uh, you're going to have whatever you can afford as far as meters. And if you're going to do specific tasks on maybe once or twice in your life, you're not going to spend $20,000 on the equipment. You can rent that, right? There are facilities that you can rent the meters, some of the more expensive ones, right? And they do come with the tech support. So uh, yeah, now there's, I just list showed like three kind of meters, but there's, uh, there's a lot uh, because not only the current and voltage being, is being measured, you have DSL meters, digital subscri subscriber light meters. You have something that's uh, uh, OTDR, which stands for optical time domain reflectometer. And that is used to measure uh, the light signals, how it behaves in the optical fiber. Those are expensive as well. So uh, there are meters that you can sort of see an X-ray vision of what's under the floor, um, all kinds of things, measuring devices. Right? Now, uh, meter leads, all right? Now, okay, it's 10 to 6 right now, and I understand you have another class uh, after this right away. So if you need to leave, go ahead and leave, and uh, I, I record all my classes. 
you'll be able to catch the rest of this because sometimes I will go over five minutes or so. Uh, and I'm posting this on YouTube in our class playlist uh, so you can catch the rest of it if you have to or if you want to leave, uh, then uh, uh, you can catch the rest of it uh, on YouTube. All right. Okay, so meter leads, red meter lead, black meter lead, probes and tips. All right. Uh, so red meter lead. Uh, yeah. Okay, press the wrong thing. All right. Zoom, zoom, zoom you. All right. <clears throat> red meter lead is connected to the voltage or resistance or the amperage port, which would be the here, here, are those red. It actually is color coded in red. All right. And it's considered to be the positive connection. However, it could be a negative connection because if you're uh, if you're using uh, at some point you might want to have the, you might going, you're going to have the lab that has to do with the op amp or the operational amp like seven forty one, uh, then you apply the zero reference and you apply positive fifteen volts and negative fifteen volts. So the black lead will be connected to the ground reference or something's called virtual ground, and the red lead is going to be connected to the negative 15 volts and you're going to see a little minus on the display um, that's when you use the um, digital multimeters all right you cannot do that with the analog multimeter you have to really pay attention to the polarity uh, because if you reverse connect the analog meter, that meter is going to try to bend the needle the other way where there is no more scale, and you can actually damage the element there. Right? So uh, usually the red lead is considered to be positive connection. Right? Black meter lead is always connected to the common pole, common pole, all right, port. <laughs> common port uh, and it's considered usually to be the negative connection probes here's the lead here's the plug here is the probe and here's the tip those probes are considered to be something that you can handle with your hands and the tip is where you make a connection with whatever you need to connect uh, uh, now they are sort of insulated but um well be careful when you do that there's a rule uh, that uh, when you're measuring voltage higher voltages uh, that can actually do some damage to you try to use one hand if you can all right uh very rarely you're going to use that if you're going to use this kind of stuff right uh what happens if there is a break in the lead here right? if you measure some voltage just like that what is going to happen if you connect, if, if one of the, if, if there's some damage in the wires, or if you by accident touch those those tips, uh, what's going to happen to the electricity? It's going to go right through you, right through your heart. So try to use something like that if you can, right? Or sometimes you can clamp on with one and use the other one with your hand in your pocket. Well, always try to, uh, to be safe when that, because it just takes a millisecond to damage you beyond recognition, all right? Uh, now, uh, probes and tips. So we just had that. Display dial settings and settings. Um, well, display and dial settings. Display, here's a digital display. It shows the measured value right here. No big deal. Meter dial. So this is the anatomy of the meter. And uh, turn the dial to change the function. Let's turn the dial to off position after use. Some meters use a separate on and off power button. So here it is, that's the dial, right? And you can see that this is an auto range meter here. Uh, panel indicator shows meter functions that can be selected by the dial. And that's this part, right? Cool. Uh, probe connecting ports. And these are these guys right here. So here's the common port. Usually you would connect the black lead to that. And the other lead, usually red, you would connect to the diode tester or whatever you can see here. 
that can be measured. So this port you would use in this particular meter, if you want to measure voltage or resistance or temperature, or the, you want, can select as a diode tester or a capacitor tester, depending on where you want to select, where you select this dial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's just uh, displays the connection ports. So the black goes to common, and then depending on so voltage over here, you would measure milliamps and microamps. And uh, over here, this one says just read those labels. This one shows that you can measure up to 400 milliamps with this port if you want to measure current. And if you want to measure anything more than 400 milliamps, you would select this port instead of that one to connect your red lead to. So you go red here and black here. Uh, and then you would measure up to 10 amps. And those are fused ports. Sometimes you're going to blow the fuse and uh, you're going to connect that and you're going to connect these leads and you said nothing is happening on the display. Uh, so that means probably the fuse is being blown. Uh, so you should be able to um, you should you should be able to replace a fuse in your multimeter. It's a common thing uh, to to replace and have some extra fuses. And one is going to be four hundred milliamps fuse, and uh, uh, the other one is going to be ten uh, uh, amps fuse. I think yours has this one, uh, this port is up to two amps and this one is up to 10 amps. Just take a look at your meter because you know every meter could be, uh, uh, meters are different from each other depending on the brand, manufacturer and the model. All right. Okay, that is the, is that the last slide? That is the last slide for today. So look, it just took us pretty much an hour. So tomorrow we're going to meet and we're going to go, uh, we're going to deal with the second part of this uh, multimeter class, okay? Now, see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.